Hello and welcome to Avio's Journey. My name is Anthony Pika. This show is all about helping the new and upcoming voiceover artists grow their business, sidestep all the crazy things that I seem to step on. We are back for another In the Truck edition. It is Wednesday. It's April 13th. Today was the day that I was supposed to be moving into my house, my studio. I'm not sure of course it's 1 uh, 1 11 right now p.m eastern time so i'm not sure you know if they're like what's going to happen at the end of the day i think what i'm going to start doing at the end of the day because they're still you know the house is not ready to be moved into it's not even cleaned <laughs> I, don't know why, I don't know why they even said it. anyways uh i do plan on getting in there tonight and working like putting up you know starting to put up more stuff getting my equipment in there because they're really close to at least finishing that room um, so I'm, I'm really excited to do that, but I wanted to come to you today for, uh, in the truck edition for some voice action, uh, voice acting training tips, three to be exact and a bonus one. So stick around to the end. I'll give you a bonus one that really helps a lot, but these three, um, voice acting tips are for conversational style voice acting. All right. So I think the number one style we're all asked for clearly is to be able to have some sort of natural conversational type of tone. That word, I think, has been taken to an extreme to mean like anytime you know you sound confident in your natural voice, that's supposed to be conversational. But the reality is is that you know, I think conversational really has uh, morphed into, you know, we want you to sound natural. Okay. Does it mean that you, you shouldn't use emphasis or you shouldn't do uh, different things with your voice, right? It just means that we want you to sound more natural, like it's you talking and not that you're pretending to be, you know, a, 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 a different character other than yourself. Okay. Um, but anyways, so I want to give you these three tips, things that uh, I've used that I've I've helped and learned over years and years and years of doing this and doing theater and so forth. Um, so let's let's dive right into this. Um, so tip number one: Don't follow proper sentence structure when you're talking. Very important because when we're having a conversation with someone, we don't focus on ending and pausing after a period or after the moment when we're supposed to stop talking. You know what I mean? Because of, of grammar purposes. The way words have to be written is not the way they are spoken. Okay? Maybe in a perfect world, but that's not the world we all live in. So it's important that when you're reading the, the words that were written probably 90% of the time for grammatical purposes on a page, all right, then you need to you know, not be afraid of ignoring, um, you know, ignoring a, um, a, a period or a comma, right, if it makes sense to do so. Because remember, that sentence structure, again, is set up for written word, and we're speaking. I mean, the, the, the words are, or the words I just used to tell you this, I mean, you, you could have added periods and commas everywhere and it would have been chaos. That's why I'll be honest with you for the way I talk is, is, is so insane because when I go to, if I try to transcribe any of the things that I do, it's so messed up because I go, you know, what from one thing to another, you know what I mean? Cause I don't like to script any of my stuff because I want to keep it natural. But, but, and, and that's something that, you know, ignoring, proper sentence structure when it I mean you know when it's appropriate is you know important and how to determine when it's appropriate is really up to you and your creative decision I mean you could get some direction but a lot of times you won't be but when you're doing the conversational style it's important to not follow that perfect structure okay um number two don't be uh, or or end sentences on a neutral pitch or a high pitch not just a low pitch so something that we're so to give you an example if i'm trying to do an authoritative style of voiceover i'm going to make sure that when i say something i'm going to end down 
This is what I'm talking about today. And I'm absolutely confident that you are going to learn something. You see how like every time there I ended down and I paused. When we're having a conversation, we don't do that. Here's perfect. Look at it. Listen to what I just said. I said, we're having a conversation. We don't do that. I ended up. I didn't end down, right? I left it up or I left it more on a neutral pitch in the middle of if, if, if you know, if you had like three lines, you know, the middle being neutral, the top being uh, high pitch and the, you know, underneath being low pitch. All right. You know, we want to be more all over the place. Whereas a lot of other types of voiceover styles like authoritative, right, we're going to be on the lower end, especially at the end of sentences. OK, because it shows that we're confident in what we're saying. So with conversational style, you don't need to end down on every sentence you can end up right it leaves and the reason why that happens is it leaves it open for more talking if you end down there is a sense of finality there right like it's finished that thought but if you don't end down and you end up there's room for more conversation does that make sense so don't always end sentences on a low pitch when you're trying to be more conversational okay Number three, take away the power of conjunctions by reducing their lengths. Some of the biggest challenges I see voice actors face in any voiceover, but especially in conversational voice acting, is that they give extra, or not extra, but they give more emphasis on conjunctions, connecting words, I like to call them, right? Like and, the, it, I... Uh, these smaller three-letter words or less that connect sentences or you know connect you know thoughts together and are important. But when we're talking naturally in a conversational style, we don't stop and make and you know or we don't stop and make sure that each word is given the same emphasis, right? Given the same. Um, strength or importance. So what I do is, is I'll often take um, a sentence or a couple sentences, you know, underline the conjunctions and try to do my best to say them quickly as opposed to the other words, almost as if I'm skipping over them. I'm not skipping over them, but I'm saying them quicker than I'm saying the other things because those are not the words we're emphasizing. And a lot of times, especially when we're first starting out, we are trying to be clear, make sure that all of our words are understood, and that's important. But in this particular case, you want to make sure, uh, especially with a conversational style, that you don't give those connecting words extra uh, emphasis. You, you, you should give them less because they're not meant to, you know, be pulled out and, and, and made important by you saying the beginning, middle, and end of them. Does that make sense? So really focus on taking back and pulling back from the conjunctions, all right, going faster. Um, all right, so those are the three. I've got a bonus just in a second. I got a bonus for you, but I just want to go over the three again real quick. Don't follow the proper sentence structure. End sentence. All right, that was the first one. Two, end sentences up or neutral instead of just ending them down like an authoritative voiceover. All right. And three, take away the power of conjunctions okay, by shortening their lengths. All right. All right. So now for the bonus one, this is probably the most beneficial one out of all of them. Um, and it takes a little bit of work, but if you do this consistently, it will change your whole voiceover uh, life, okay? Every day, I want you to do two to three minutes of improv a story that you're going to make up. You are going to make up a story. Doesn't have to, doesn't, that to be anything real, fake, whatever, doesn't matter. But you, for two to three minutes, you are going to talk. Telling a story. Okay? Record yourself. Don't record yourself. It doesn't really matter. But I want you to do it in front of a microphone. You are going to improv two to three minutes. Doesn't take a lot of time. 
But your job is to come up with a story and say it. You're in, your improvisation. You're improving it. You're not planning it. You're not writing it ahead. There's no script. You are just starting to talk. We need to get that feeling of what it's like to talk, especially when no one's around and in a conversational style. One of the things that has helped me so much in my career as a voice actor, honestly, has been doing videos like this. Like I'm talking to you right now, but I'm in a truck. I'm by myself. I'm looking at a little green dot to make sure I'm talking into, you know, I'm looking into the camera. All right. My microphone is up here. I'm aware of where I am. But the talking and the consistency of that and the style in which I talk in it over time getting you know, doing this day in and day out for years it be, it creates a uh, it creates a, a a sense of being comfortable in just talking all right and and that's something that you can do literally 2 to 3 minutes a day improving a story all right listen i hope this really helps uh, if you like this video please hit that like button also uh, please subscribe. Really appreciate that. On, and also, if you want to do, if you want to actually, you know, actually take my conversational voiceover co uh, course, which I have, uh, there'll be a link below for that. You can check that out. Um, but other than that, I thank you guys for watching. As always, you have a wonderful, wonderful day, and I will talk to y'all soon. Bye bye.